David Davo Davidson claims to be one of Australia's largest livestock owners. Not cattle or sheep, but worms, a mostly hidden underground enterprise that sprang from a handful of horses and the need to clean up their piles of dung. Davo set out to find a natural solution and worms emerged as an obvious answer. We get the food waste, we mix it with a source of carbon, which is usually wood chips. Then we put it in slabs or worm beds, and then we just walk away and leave it. We don't even water it, which means that the process takes quite a lot longer, but there's far less energy consumed in the process. Today, he's collecting worm castings, the end result of his work. Though it resembles ordinary soil, that's far from the case. But let's start at the beginning. Beneath the surface in this tiny corner of his farm at Broomfield in southwest Victoria is one of the most productive places on the planet. Countless millions of worms are working away below ground. And with them, countless billions of biota, microscopic microbes, pathogens and more. And this is feeding time, a daily truckload of organic waste. Without worms, I believe that the whole planet would just become a giant um, rubbish dump. These potato peelings from a giant food factory used to go to landfill. These days, the Davidson family gets paid to deal with it, and it's fending off requests to dispose of green waste from as far away as Melbourne. There's a wide variety. It's mainly waste from food production, but it's also broken down or wood chips from demolition, old wooden buildings that have seen their best days, and so that's chipped up and, and comes here. But there's always surprises. A, a few years ago, we got a phone call that a truck carrying a, a, a load of Wendy's donuts had broken down on the highway. Worms will eat anything that was once living, so they're, they're very adaptable. These compost worms also have another advantage over conventional compost making methods. Far less energy is expended. Everything that comes onto this property was destined for landfill. And one of the beauties of having the worms do the decomposing, it overcomes the problem that normal composters have that they don't want contamination in their food stuff. So, so plastics and plastic linings and all that sort of stuff is annoyance to, to them, but the worms will get in amongst it all, eat all the organic matter, and we finish up once the, we've got dry worm castings, we've got dry plastic that's quite easy to pull out and uh, remove from the, the waste. To get the optimal product takes some time. Usually between two and three years, depending on how wet the seasons are. If we have a dry spell, the whole system just slows down, but that's no big deal. Then we get the moisture, everything fires up, and away we go. And eventually we just test it after a while and find that it's a finished product. Namely, worm castings, or plainly speaking, worm poo, which Davo packages up in 20 litre boxes and sends out around the country with instructions on how to rehydrate and activate the microorganisms then apply to soil or crops as worm juice or worm tea. One box is enough to treat 24 hectares and promote worms and beneficial microorganisms. These days, the Davidson's farm, with its worm-enriched soils, stays green for far longer than most. The animals are healthier and the land doesn't need a regular spray of this stuff. The great pioneering naturalist Charles Darwin describe worms as nature's miracle workers. In fact, he was so impressed and obsessed by them that he studied them for 40 years, and he even wrote a book about them. Darwin knew this much at least. Things grow and then they die, but the worms and the microbes that they produce then decompose the dead matter, whether it's plants, humans, whatever, animals, and uh, turn it back into soil so they complete the cycle. If we didn't have them, then uh, we wouldn't have that last part of the cycle and, as I say, it'd be a, a pretty putrid planet. These days, science can explain what Darwin was desperate to discover, what worms actually do. 
They break the material down so that the bacteria and the fungi and the nematodes, those smaller or the um, protozoa, are able to then take that organic matter and release the elements back into elemental form, which are plant available. This is what life on Earth is about. Dr. Mary Cole is a soil microbiologist and plant pathologist. During a career spanning more than half a century, she's analysed countless soil samples. These are beneficial bugs. It's estimated a teaspoon of castings contains some 8 billion microorganisms. It's Mother Nature's perfect gift to plants. Mother Nature's been recycling nutrients from everything that once lived. Years ago, Russell Calder's health collapsed so badly that for a while he lost the power of speech. I picked up a book by Bill Mollison 24 years ago or thereabouts and um, I, re I read the book and um, permaculture seemed like the right way for me and so that's what got me started. started making compost and experimenting with different types of worms, even ventured into bait worms for there for a little while and been playing around with composts and worms and soils and such ever since and I've been just really interested in plants, been growing plants since I was probably six or eight years old. Over two decades he has turned a barren, treeless block at Nia West in Victoria's Mallee into a green oasis and developed a burgeoning worm tea making operation. Within these rows of compost, cow manure from sale yards and feedlots and green waste, there are billions of microorganisms and countless worms at work, breaking it down. They are in such great numbers, that's what causes the compost to heat. And then, then once the compost has gone through its process, which is rather involved, it takes about three months to make a good compost. While adhering to stringent national organic standards, over two decades, Russell says he's now got the recipe right the liquid worm castings or worm tea. Swan Hill grain and cereal grower Ross Watson has closely followed its journey. The liquids got richer and darker just to the eye and I believe it's a better product. Like it's, it's got stronger. So Russell, there should be what, quite a lot of action under the surface here. Yes, there should be a lot of compost worms right here. Let's take a look. So as you can see, Tim, a lot of worms there. Russell, there are just absolutely countless worms here. Yes, huge numbers of worms, and there's be actually billions of them in these two worm beds. They can multiply double in number every 30 to 60 days. And these worm castings are the most wonderful compound. They are. They're, they're, it's Mother Nature's ultimate um, plant food, I suppose, and, and the worms are Mother Nature's ultimate recyclers, and that's what they've been doing for 450 billion years. Been recycling organic matter and recycling it into nutrients for the next generation. This magic, odourless liquid oozes from these long rows of worm castings into underground tanks. Then it's dispensed to customers in 1,000 litre containers. Russell's permaculture business is a family affair. Two of his kids, including son Paul, work here. It's attracting new customers through word of mouth, and the operation is set to double in size. This nutrient-rich worm juice is also finding increasing favour for broadacre crops. Initially, Ross Watson tried it because it was cheaper than using chemicals. I was aware of the cost, and if I could find an alternative that was doing as good a job. Now he soaks his seed in it at sowing time, and has observed there's less insect damage in his crops. So instead of putting chemical on my seed treatment, I'll, I'll just use stimulant. And I'm convinced that it's giving more vigour to the plant and it makes me feel good because I'm not using a, a chemical that I don't understand. Another broadacre user is the Edwards family, seen here on Landline a few years back. They go biodynamic cereal crops at Murrayville in Victoria's Mallee. The Edwards farm has expanded to more than 2,000 hectares in recent years. Their grain fetches premium prices and the family credits much of his success to spraying emerging crops with worm-derived fertiliser. 
Organic vegetable grower Adam Farley is also upping its use in his business. The last sort of two to three years, it's a staple part of our farm fertigation. And even um, this year, we're going to look at maybe dipping plants into a solution to give it a better start. This region can experience summer temperatures into the 40s. Adam believes worm juice rebalances and regenerates soil and even helps beat the heat. I look at the crops in three different growth stages, so baby being the first. So we use compost and composted manures to start our plant's life on the ground. So the stimulator comes in and helps the uptake of that fertiliser for the plants to put down its roots and start its life. Then from there into your teenage stage, it's all about bulking the plant up. And once again, we're putting more fertiliser on as it goes and it facilitates uptake, helps the strength of the plant. And then when we go through to the adult, we're looking at the harvesting of the plant or especially a broccoli head or a zucchini. We're really finding it's helping with the quality and even heat stress in the summertime, the plants won't flag, the, the better water uptake. So I think all in all, it's facilitating from the ground through to the plants, just a healthier plant in general. So why isn't it more widely used? Agricultural companies, agronomists. Universities that don't teach soil microbiology in their agricultural courses. And so you have agronomists coming out that have been raised in a chemical paradigm. You have chemical companies who will offer free agronomists if you stop using organic methods. There's money, it's, it's, it's economics. It's nothing to do with saving the planet. They don't care, it's money. Adam Farley can only go by what he sees. We're finding worms. And I think every farmer strives for worms in the ground and it can be a pretty hard up thing to say you got them, but we can put a shovel in the ground and find worms every time. Our understanding and recognition of these miracle workers is ever growing. Mary Cole says worms can play a vital role in saving the planet, but she warns we have to change our ways. With the globe, climate, warming, etc., we're past the point of no return. We have to start looking after what agricultural soil we have left and we have to improve on it and we can do it rapidly. Nature is very forgiving. And so we can turn soil around in a couple of years. We have to start doing it now.